everybody, and welcome back to the Messiah Principles. Um, we've been, uh, if you've been with us for any period of time, you're realizing that what we're doing is we're looking at uh, the scriptures in a whole different way. And a lot of times what we have to do is we have to unlearn what we have learned. And really what we have been looking at in the scriptures and we've been seeing the way Jesus teaches, um, we're looking at it from a Hebraic mindset instead of looking at it from an English mindset. Now, the first thing we have to realize and remember, Hebrew reads the opposite direction. It reads from right to left instead of from left to right. So uh, God kind of gave me a revelation on that. When I was asking him about this, I knew something was a little bit different about it. He says, well, he says, what sits at the right hand? The word of God, Jesus. So therefore, the word goes that way. <laughs> so anyway, they, you know, it's, it's kind of like what we were talking about last week. Jesus grew up, what? In a Hebrew culture, in a Hebrew mindset. He spoke Hebrew and Aramaic. And, and so when we look at the scriptures, we see him in English, but he was really speaking in Hebrew. So what we're doing is we're going through the book and the course that I wrote called The Messiah Principles. You can go to the messiahprinciples.org and get yourself a manual or a book. And this will kind of help you along. And it's not too late to get started. We're only about a quarter of the way through. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, we're going through each one of the spiritual principles that are attached to the Hebrew alphabet letters. Very interesting. And so when we go through this, we're going to start to see that each one actually pulls the anointing over and places it on top of it so that you're, 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 each time that you come to class or you read them or you study them, your glass gets a little fuller. <laughs> and, you know, I had one person say, brother, this is kind of like drinking out of a fire hose. I said, well, yeah, <laughs> it can be. And that's the way that I thought about it because when, first, when God first gave me this and I started studying and I started getting into it, I'm going like, man, this is a lot here. My, you know, this, this was 15 years ago, you know. So welcome to the journey. <laughs> and... I am by no, no, by no means at the end of this journey. We're, we're all somewhere on that path. And so we're going to backtrack just a little bit. And for the audience that is here with us tonight, um, some of you may recognize these and some of them may not. But we want to start back at the beginning. And for, for those that were not here the last couple of weeks, um, I'm, you're not going to get an F on this pop quiz. <laughs> So you got an excuse from the dean, okay? So, all right. So we're going to go through our Hebrew alphabet letters, and then I'll tell you what each one represents. Because in the Messiah principles, God impressed upon me that just like Jesus was the walking word of God, so are we. We're going to learn more about that today, okay? Um, you'll notice here that we have two of the Hebrew alphabet letters, right on the very beginning, the Aleph and the Tav. And we talked about that. Um, this, this Aleph and Tav was uh, found to be together just like this in Hebrew scripture over 7,000 times, but it's never translated. And it's pronounced et. Now today we're going to look at uh, a letter that acts as a conjunction and also is in the word, is the word and in Hebrew, but it's, it's only been translated or used in scripture as and about 25 times. Otherwise, it's attached to the beginning of the word, the letter is. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay? But the Aleph and the Tav represents all of the Hebrew alphabet letters combined together with all of the spiritual principles involved. When God was creating the universe, he had to set a foundation by the way his kingdom will rule. If I was a king, I had to set the rules and regs, so to speak, right? 
of how a, my kingdom is to be established and how it is to be run. So when we look at this, God is sowing these over the thousands and thousands of years into the earth because we have to realize something. God is coming to live here. He's bringing heaven to earth. Now, you've heard me say this before. I mean, heaven's a pretty nice place. I don't know, you know, God's not coming to live here and not bringing everything with him. Well, he starts by putting everything in you. <laughs> you don't leave anything out. The only part that he leaves out is the stuff we haven't discovered yet. Right? And it's all hidden within your spirit. Okay? There, look. Look. The, candle, the spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly, it tells us in Proverbs. And we see that that candle of the Lord, we see is the word Aish. Well, Aish starts with an Aleph, the very first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it means fire. Ah, we're going to find out something about this. What is your spirit made of? The same stuff God's spirit made of, divine energy. The prophet says that he was a fire from the loins up and a fire from the loins down. What do you think gives you your drive? You ever heard about, say, man, everybody here say, man, I'm on fire for that thing. I'm on fire for that project. Well, where do you think they got that? It's boiling up on the inside of them, okay? So this is the first one, Aleph. It's right there. That's the first word. I'm going to backtrack just a second. The next one is going to be Bet. Bet means house, like Bethel, okay? Maybe I ought to draw it. Let's do it this way. Bet. Bet. Like Bethel, yes. Yes, I got a manual. <laughs> Yes. So what we'll do is we'll go over these alphabet letters one at a time and because I want to backtrack just a little bit. But the bet means house. Now what's very interesting is the very first letter of the entire Bible starts with a bet. Bereshit. It's translated in the beginning. Okay? So we see that Bereshit starts with a bet. As a matter of fact, in some Hebrew scriptures... This bet is overlarged, larger than the rest of the Hebrew alphabet letters, because it's, it, God wants to tell you that he's coming to build a big house on this planet for himself. So we will, we will uh, we'll get a little bit further into this as we go along, okay? All right? Elizabeth, do we have a manual handy by any chance? Just let him borrow a manual. That way we can go through it, okay? Our next one we, we have is, is this, uh, yeah, there you go, is the gimel. That's fine. And, and, and the gimel, yes. Right. Bet, well, yeah, there's, there's, different, there's, different, there's different words for that, but yes, uh, it's isha. Isha and isha, correct, yes. Yeah, well... In, in Hebrew, you're going to find out that they, God wrote this and told Moses to write this and the Hebrew children and scribes to write this on purpose. Every one of them, every Hebrew alphabet letter has purpose. When God creates something, he does not create it just because it looks nice. It's got purpose. And so, you've got to remember something. Hebrew is the only language on the planet that God wrote with his finger. Well, that would be important. He didn't write Chinese, he wrote Hebrew, okay? So what we're looking at here is we're looking at God with his finger, with his hand, just like he made man with it. He is bringing these spiritual principles into the earth realm. Now, we're going to see some words, and we're going to start building on this, and you're going to start seeing some of these things, okay? And after we get done with tonight, if you want, you can text your questions or whatever the case may be on Facebook Live, and you can let us know, and we'll get back to you with those, okay? So as we, as we continue, let's go to our next one, which would be the gimel. Gimel means camel. Gamal is camel. And remember, we were talking about this. Camel carries things 
from a rich man's house to someone who is lacking through desert conditions. So now, if Aleph represents God, because the, the word for Elohim, El, Adonai, they all start with the Aleph. So the Aleph represents God. He's the very first place that, we're, that we are. He's the first of all creation. So he's the first letter. And then Bet, as in Bethel, or house of God, or the son of God. How do, how do you say son in Hebrew? Ben. ben. Yeah. Okay, see, so there's a house there. As a matter of fact, the word bara, to create, starts with a bet, doesn't it? And bershit, in the beginning. And we also see Baruka, the blessing. Baruk, to bless. So we see a lot of things there about increase and prosperity in that bet. Well, the next one, like I said, is the Gimel. That represents the Holy Spirit. He's the one that travels from God to bring good things, doesn't he? So we see that the Father, Son, Holy Ghost is right there in the very beginning of the three Hebrew letters. Okay? Then we come to our next one, which is called Dalit. Dalit means door. We found out that we are a door into the kingdom of God's for somebody's life. And at, now, as we go through these Messiah principles that I call them, we're going to find out that we've been doing a lot of these things in our Christian life and in our Christian walk, and we just we're, we didn't realize it. It's just part of, why? Because it's part of God. It's part of the spiritual principles in Him. Because we are seated in heavenly places in Him. Which means we get the throne's view. <laughs> okay? So here we go. Okay, now we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna cook right along. And then our next one we had, if you all remember these, this was the one from last week. This is the what? The hay. Okay? And hay means revelation or light. If I was to say to somebody, hey, I'd give you revelation that I was here. Or, uh, you know, it's like, it's, it's, we, we get a lot of these. Yod, hey, vav, hey. Right? The name of God, Yahweh, or Jehovah. Okay? We get hallelujah. Doesn't praise bring a revelation? I, I get all kinds of revelation while I'm praising God. Matter of fact, I was, I was teaching last week in Orlando, and the word halal in Hebrew is... The, the only praise that comes from your spirit. The rest of it, your spirit uses your mouth to move. It's called the halal. It's the only one that has three lamads in it. No, 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 no. We'll get to the lamad, because the lamad, the lamad, the lamad looks like a throne. <laughs> and it means to teach. <laughs> it's the very center of the Hebrew alphabet. All the other letters revolve around this, just like your life revolves around everything you have been taught. And depending on who sits on the seat of your life is the one who directs your life. That's why God gave you the Holy Ghost, so he can sit there. So in other words, like I said last week, we got to stop sitting on our throne so we can go and sit on his. <laughs> right? Okay, so we'll, we'll get cooking here, okay? So where is Faith? She's, she's going to help me with my slides today. Faith? We're going to go to our first letter for tonight. All right? And uh, this is the letter Vav. Vav. And it means hook or connection. It's the sixth letter of your Hebrew alphabet. Now, how many of you all have gone into the grocery store and has seen a um, energy drink that has one, two, three of those on it. Yes. The monster drink, right? So what is, what is the number of that? Six, six, six. Why do you think it says release the beast? <laughs> see, we see Hebrew around us, but we don't realize that's what it means. Now, the vav is pronounced v in Hebrew, like vav, okay? Like a valve, vav. And in sense, it means hook or connection. And it represented, it's representative of man because he was created on the sixth day. Which means that man is the hook 
or the connection between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. We are the only creature that God ever created that can operate in two dimensions at the same time. We can operate in the spirit and in the natural. In fact, we're the only one that God ever created that can pull things out of the spiritual realm and cause them to manifest in the physical realm. Spirit of love. And then the demonic realm, spirit of hate. See, you've got to understand something. And, I, and this is going to sound a little crazy, but I'm going to wa- you're going to watch. I'm going to show this to you, okay? God is looking for a vav on the earth to distribute the goods of heaven. And it starts with, you sow in love. Right? So, this vav tells us that we are suspended between heaven and earth to create the atmosphere in heaven on earth. Remember, Jesus was teaching us, wasn't he? Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, Jesus teaching these things. He knows these spiritual principles. He's sowing these into our lives. And for thousands and thousands of years, it's been written in this book. It's been written in the New Testament. And actually, to be honest with you, it's been written in the Old Testament as well. If you go to Psalm 8, Who art man that you have made him, that you have crowned him with glory and honor? You have set all things under his feet. (laughs) We're going to talk about the crowned Vav next, in our next letter. It's going to get really good. But this Vav is uh, something that we have to understand because it is a connector point in the spirit between heaven and earth. Faith, can you help me out? Remember when I was talking about the olive and the tav? Okay? This is the vav, and whenever it's in the front of a word, like this, va'et, okay? Va, va'et, okay? Whenever it's like this, it means and. So, in other words, va'amar, okay, would mean the voice, or uh, uh, and he said, right? Va'amar, God, amar, to speak or to say, okay? So, va'amar, so if you was to put the vav in front of a word, it would say and, so it's a conjunction like this. Well, it, it, yeah, but, but you've got to remember something. Hebrew here, Hebrew here has a meaning and a purpose for everything. And watch, watch this, okay? This is va'et, okay, which is translated as the word and. The whole thing is translated as the word and, not just this. Now, why is that important? Let me explain. Okay, when I first started this course, I told you that if I spoke to you in Hebrew, I would translate it, but if I spoke in Texan, you're on your own, okay? So I'm going to speak in some Hebrew, and I'm going to show you where this is at. It's in the very first verse of your entire Bible. Bereshit, bara, Elohim, et, hashameams, va'et, ha'aretz. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? So now what is, those that are into English, what is the word and? What kind of a word is that? It's a conjunction. It joins two things together. What this is saying is, is man operating in an olive and ta, the olive and ta, the spiritual principles in all of the Hebrew alphabet letters, joins heaven to earth. God wanted earth to look just like heaven. He couldn't tell the difference between the two of them. That's, that was his original design. And guess, who, guess who's responsible for doing that? Man. Man's responsible for doing that. Why? He put man on this planet to do what? To have dominion. Right? And what was the first thing that God said to them? He gave them the blessing. It says... And he blessed them and said. So he placed the blessing on them and Baruka empowered to prosper would be the translation of that. And then he told them what to do with that. <laughs> be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you all know the story, right? 
So, but this word va'et is translated and, and it's a conjunction word. Okay? So, we are responsible for joining heaven to the earth. I'll let that sink in for just a minute. <laughs> okay? See, the reason why is because of this. God wants you to be the pipeline through which the glory of God flows from the throne to the people around you. I like to put it like this. You the, you the, you the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> hey, that'll preach, man. I, 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 where's my organ? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that's why God is speaking the words to you and he's feeding you. It is like a conduit from heaven to earth. It's like a shaft. How many of y'all ever know about a little bit about plumbing, about putting, putting uh, pipelines and things like this all together and putting pipes together? Well, a, a lot of times what we find out is, is that this pipeline from heaven to the earth, like this, is right on top of you. Don't make fun of my little stick, man, Mal. Okay, hang on. Put a little hair on him. Anyway, you get the idea, okay? The pipeline. Now, in this pipeline is this little gadget right here, and this is called, this is called a valve. Water flows through freely when the valve is wide open. However, if the valve is closed... Nothing flows. All right? So, that's why we've got to be open for the glory of God to come on top of us and not be closed to what God wants to do because you shut off the flow. Now, what would shut off the flow? Everything that is opposite of God. <laughs> Y'all remember last week when I showed you about the very, very ending? I'll show you a little bit. I'll, I'll re rehearse this just a moment so that we can understand. If you ever see this, there's that olive. You see the Lamed olive together. If you ever see a picture of the Ten Commandments, you're going to see this as the very first word on, sev on, on all of them. It's translated as, Thou shalt not. Right? The very first part. Translated, thou shalt not. It actually means no. There, there is no shout in Hebrew. There is no shall not. It's, always, it's just no. There's either don't do it or do it. It's either no or yes. It's black and white. There is no, well, maybe, and that's why it's not called the, good, the Ten Suggestions. It's called the Ten Commandments. Okay? We take them as kind of like suggestions, a lot of people. But what's happening is, is it's not thou shalt not. No, it is don't. Or don't do this. Why? You shut off the flow. God's trying to flow through you and you're shutting it off. And so we look at this and this is the word no. Well, if we turn those letters around and we put them this direction, now it spells the word El. As in like Elohim. No, it means El. Elohim. Like God's name, El, Elohim, right, okay? This, in other words, this, this spiritual principle right here means everything that is opposite of God is a no to you. Everything that is opposite of God is no. Don't do that. Why? You clog up the pipeline. <laughs> God's trying to get power through you and you're, and you're clogging up. We need a spiritual rotor rooter to get it out of there, <laughs> right? Yes, sin is, sin is it, period. Sin is disobedience, correct? And so what we got to look at here is that we don't want to stop out the flow. So how do we keep the flow going? It's a combination between your mouth and your will. Right? Because your mouth will tell your will what to do in a way. No, I won't do that. I remember when I got delivered from, from a bunch of mess. And the devil tried to lure me back into it. No, I won't do that. Just on the way here, I saw the sign. I saw the sign over at Culliver's, and it said, Raspberry Cheesecake Ice Cream. I'm going, oh, the devil's a liar. He's trying to tempt me. 
I rebuke you in Jesus' name. <laughs> but you know what? I was victorious. <laughs> I did not turn around like a maniac and head through the drive-thru, okay? So, but here, yeah, that's right. Now, once in a while, it's okay, but I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it's not like this. So we got to remember that valve can turn both directions. You can open up the flow from heaven, or you can open up the flow from kingdom of darkness. Whichever way you go. Now, whichever way the valve is turned the most, the power from that kingdom flows into your life the most. So now we have to understand, we get a little bit of an idea, why does bad things happen to good people? They got the valve turned in the wrong direction. <laughs> okay? So, if you'll notice something about the vav, it's kind of pointed up a little bit. Well, that's because its focus is in heaven, not on the earth. The Apostle Paul was teaching this. Right? Where do we find it? Philippians chapter 3, right? Seek those things which are above. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Right? We see this because Why? Because what you love, you will follow. And you will flow the power from the thing you're following into the people around you. Okay, look, we live in a race town, right? There's a lot of folks that just love the races. Nothing wrong with the races, just don't let it overtake your life and let it be your leader of your life, right? I mean, you can put it on anything. You can put it in cars, you can put it in, uh, you can put it in chocolate. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Anyway, okay. <laughs> anyway, so, so you know, here, it, it's, it's like in Texas, it was hunting. You could always tell it because they had this uh, big pickup truck, and then they had that little deer sticker on the back. And I said, well, I know how they pray. Deer God? No. Anyway, so, we see. <laughs> but see, there was things that was taking over their life, and what it was doing? It was holding back the power of God, and they were leaning towards this. I grew up with football, and that was my what? Focus. And so my drive was football when I was a kid. Right? In fact, I grew up with some of the greats in football down in Fort Lauderdale. I mean, Jim Tullis was my head coach, and he was the uh, tight end for, or the defensive end for the Miami Dolphins. And Jim Kick and Larry Zonka used to come up and watch us practice. I mean, we used, I mean, we had, I mean, Benny Blades was my safety, and he's now playing for Detroit Lions. So, I mean, you know, we grew up with some great people. Warren Moon was our quarterback. Y'all remember him? So, anyway, people, you know, come up, and so we, we get to see these. But, see, you don't ever es underestimate somebody that you have a relationship with because you don't know where they're going. They're a what? They're a valve on the earth for somebody and something Look, you can be an inspiration to somebody. You could say one word of God that changed their life forever. You know, really, I, I believe that very seriously. One word of God changed your life forever. Here's the word of God that changed my life. When I was in heaven and I saw God sitting on the throne, and all of a sudden, you know, I was walking back out, and I was going outside the city, and I just found myself outside the city, and I saw this strobe light heading towards me. It was just flashing. And then it got closer and closer. And pretty soon, um, it, it wasn't really flashing. It was light, but it was bouncing because it was, some, it was light around somebody that was heading towards me. And it turned out to be Jesus. And this light that was emanating from him didn't hurt my eyes, but it went all through every cell of my body that I had. And, it was, and that light was such intense love. And I felt the light. I felt it, it was love. And I was sitting, you know, I'm just standing there amazed. And I, he knew what I was thinking because I was wondering in my mind, you know, I see the light. Okay, yeah, but I'm feeling it. What it and this is what came into my spirit. He says, I have so much love that I create light. My love creates the light. So then the next question would be, how much love does it take to create light? <laughs> right? But that's what it is. Now that light lives within you, and that love is what flows down through your valve, through, your, through the valve on the earth. Uh, honey, change the next one. Let me show you how this works. What do we see right here? 
we see a vav, don't we? Except we see one of the first instances here that we're going to talk about as the vav being used as a vowel, an A-E-I-O-U. In this case, it is a oo, because, uh, honey, move the next slide, because this is the word Yeshua, Jesus' name in Hebrew, and it actually means salvation. But what's right here in the middle? The vav with a what? A dot or a dagesh. Now, let me regress a little bit so that we can understand. The first time we saw a dagesh was where? In a baked. Right? In a baked. Okay? Now, there's another letter that looks just like it. It's actually a bet too, but it didn't have the dagesh, and it's a vet. It's pronounced V, like Bob. It's a vet. Okay? Now, what the Hebrews say, the rabbis say that this dagesh or this dot represents the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you are a bet el, you are a house of God. If he does not live in you, you are a vet el, a house of man, or flesh house. You know, you're a carnal person. So now we see Yeshua with what? A vav with a what? Holy Ghost on the inside. Just a little bit of, of cool stuff going on here, isn't it? Right? Well, we're going to see this again here very shortly because that, what's, on, what's the next slide? Let me see what's the next slide. Yeah. Now we're going to see another instances of this one. Okay? We're going to learn a little Hebrew as we go along. You're going to, look, I don't, I don't expect you to get this. this. I'm wetting your whistle. Um, all I'm doing is I'm just wetting your whistle a little bit, but I'm kind of showing you some kind of neat stuff. Now, Dr. Robin's been around for a little while. She's seen some of this stuff, right? Yeah. So she'll get a little bit more. But every time you come, I think this is what, your second time through? Yeah. You get a little bit more every time because you know why? I don't teach it the same way every time, do I? Nope. Nope. Okay. So go ahead, hon. This, this is the word shalom. You'll see this a lot. Now, shalom has been translated as what? Peace. Right? But guess what? Look at all the other translations. Wholeness, completeness, health, healing, prosperity, peace, tranquility, ceasing of hostilities, and these plus, plus, pluses means like this. It's used in this case. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing needed, nothing lacking. <laughs> so now, the question is this. In John chapter 14, when Jesus says, Peace I leave unto you, my peace I leave with you. Not like man's, but watch, watch, watch. He, he wasn't speaking in English. He was speaking in Hebrew or Aramaic. Shalem. Same word in Aramaic. So when he said, my peace I leave with you, his peace, okay? He's, he would have said the word what? Shalom. So which one of these was he talking about? All of them. But see, we don't pick that up, do we, in English? We will in Hebrew. Stick around, we'll pick up a lot more <laughs> as we go along. So we see this, and we see this shalom. Remember the lamed? Look, look at this. Here it is right here in the middle. And then the sheen, representative of God's fire and the shalom of God. And then mems means waters. We'll see a lot of stuff. And, and what's going to be able, at the end of this course, I hope you're going to get enough to where you can tell the story of a word. Tell the story of a word. Let me, let me give you an example of telling a story of a word. Okay? When we first started this, we looked at this word. Oops. Whoop. This is the word. Hang on, let me let me, let me, put, let me put, put my vowels down here. Put my kamuts. So this will be da davar. 
Okay? Devar. That's the word that's translated as word, thing, or promise in Hebrew. So if I was to say the word of God, it would be Devar Elohim. Word of God. Okay? Now, watch the story. We, we found out that Dalit, which is this letter right here, means what? Door. We just talked about that before we started, didn't we? Okay? And then the vet, we talked about the bet and the vet. This is representative man, house. Right? And this resh, we haven't gotten there yet, but resh means head, like Rosh Hashanah, head of the year, or Rosh Kodesh, head of the month. So this would be head. So now I'm going to teach you and show you how to read a story from a word because every word is like a hieroglyphic. It tells a story. It has a lifestyle all of its own. It has spiritual principles attached to it. You ready? Words, things, or promises are a door to a man's head. Stop and think about that for just a minute. How do you get people to do things? Through words. How does, how does kings rule? By decrees, by the words. Right? It's a door. Words are a door to a person's head. How do people get saved? By hearing the word of God. They hear the word of God. It's a door. So word, as a matter of fact, you want to hear something really funny? If you put an I am on the end of this, devar, devarim, anytime you see an I am or an OT on the end of Hebrew, it's plural. Devarim is the name of the book that we know of as Deuteronomy. Words. <laughs> it's words, things, and promises. Why is that? Because the Hebrews know that words create things. It's the same thing. There ain't nothing in this room and anything that you see, that you drive, or that you eat, or anything that was not created by words. I don't care if it was written on a paper, or communicated by a computer, or talked about, or planned out. This computer, everything was created by words. There's nothing on this planet that was not created by words. Light be. That's what God said. Words. Everything was created by words. That shirt you're wearing is created by words. Somebody said something. Hey, I think we're like this shirt. Let's, let's make it like this. Let's make it like this. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Yes. That's correct. Vibrating energy. Yeah. Well, now stop and think about this. Stop and, stop and think about this. Can you see my words? No. That means they're operating in the spirit realm. They're creating vibrations. Right? Okay. When God, Amar, spoke, the word, or light be, or be light, light be, actually be, be light. Okay? When he spoke that, this is what, we found out is what created, he did, okay, he did, the, the sun and the moon was not created until the fourth day. So what light was he talking about? His own. He extended his glory. That's how powerful it was, is when he spoke those two words, first words God's ever spoken in the Hebrew, in, 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 in the Bible, light be, light was. Actually, it's or or which means light be, or be light, be light. In other words, it happened instantly. There was no, no lag time. It wasn't, see, gee, let's see. How about 9 o'clock? Why don't you just turn? No, he didn't say that. He said, light be, and it happened. Okay? And so it's still in force today. Well, the scientists say that the universe is expanding still, and it's getting faster. And so there is a force, and they don't know what it is. I know what it is. or. <laughs> okay? It's causing it to expand. Now, here's something we have to understand. That same Ichehor is now inside of you because you are what? A child of light, so that is the command for you to expand. 
that light inside of you is giving you a command to expand your territory, expand where you're at. That's why he said, told, that's what he told Adam, didn't he? Be fruitful, multiply. All right? Fill the earth. Expand this place. Buddy, I need some help. <laughs> All right? So we see that this whole thing we, that we're looking at, we, we don't really get a very good grasp of it in English, but once we start looking at it a little bit more in the Hebrew, we start to get a little bit more of an understanding of who we are and whose we are. We're a vav on the earth. We are an ambassador for the kingdom of light. Aren't we? We used to be an ambassador for the other dude. <laughs> right? How, how, how can I put this in Texas? Not no mo. <laughs> right? Okay. So, here's our spiritual principle number six. You are God's earth connection or hook between the spiritual realm and the natural realm. Now, let me read this out of the manual. You are the one who brings the things from the heavenly realm into the earth realm. You are the connection to God for many and the pipeline of his love to others. You are God's distributors of the fruit of the Spirit and the glory of God on the earth. Remember, you are the connection between the heavenly realm and the earthly realm to bring the things in heaven to the earth. This is how God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven and can occur in your life and the lives of those around you. Now the reason I said that is because only a vav on the earth can create our next letter. Zion. Zion means sword or word of God. It's also what they call a crowned vav. The Hebrews say that the Zion represents the foundation that's in heaven and God's word coming down to earth. Zion. Not Zion, Zion. But it means sword or weapon. The Apostle Paul re related to it as what? The sword, a uh, what? The two, -ed no, well, yeah, he did that too. The, in the armor of God, the sword of the Spirit. But then he also did what? The, the word of God is quick and sharp, sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing, yeah, that's right, piercing. It's a divider. It's a divider between the soul and the spirit. Let me, let me tell you. Now, discern the tense and the intents of the heart. Now, here's what you have to understand. When the Apostle Paul said that, you've got to remember, he, before he was the Apostle Paul, he was Rav Shaul. Rabbi Saul. Okay? He was a teacher of teachers. He would have had what we call like double doctorate today. Okay? And so he was taking something that was totally foreign to the Hebrews because they said that the spirit and the soul is so tightly interwound on the inner man that you could not separate the two. But yet he says what? The Word of God separates it. Now, was he talking about the written Word? Yes. Was he talking about the walking Word of God, Jesus himself on the earth? Yes. You see how we can have a lot of different things? But this right here, he was talking about this. Here's what we got to remember. We are God's ambassadors on the earth to lay, take the foundation of heaven and plant it on the earth through the Word of God. All right. I want to show you a little, little example. Go, okay. There are two words, and we just talked. We just, okay. We just, I just showed you one here. Remember the word devar? That's one of the most important words in the Hebrew language. Words, things, promises. Okay? They stick on that. This next word is the second most important Hebrew word. Go ahead, Han. Zakar. Now, Zakar is not the thing sitting in zoo driveway. Okay? This is... <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. And it's not the car that the zookeeper drives. Okay? <laughs> Zakar. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. It actually means, uh, yeah, to remember. 
Remember the word. Look what's in the very beginning of it. What is it? A Zion. Now, this one right here we're going to cover in a couple of weeks. This is called the Kaf. It looks like a backward C, but you've got to remember, almost all of your letters your, your, in the English language, and even in Hebrew, came from a Semitic languages that were on the earth um, at the time. I showed this last week. I'll do it again this week. If I was going to make the letter A in Paleo-Hebrew, it would look like this. Today it looks like this. So almost all the languages on the planet were made from a Mesopotamia area wide. Well, this is the C backwards. Our C is like this, right? Sapa. Yes, it's the cradle of civilization. That's exactly right. So, so this right here is Zakar. Now we're going to find out is that this word Zakar, this cuff right here, means activated potential. <laughs> and so what we see... When we see the Word of God gives, acts, gives activated potential to your resh head, see how we start to tell stories now with the Hebrew alphabet and with the different spiritual principles attached to it. So this is the word to remember. And this right here, we have to remember as a um, walking Word of God on the planet as we are now as a Zion, we also have to remember that Jesus used the same spiritual principles that he is teaching us. I got a question. What did, God what did Jesus use in the desert when he was being tempted by the devil for, for words? Right. So what he had to do is he had to re let the devil remember the word. And he was having to, he didn't think it, he spoke it. As a matter of fact, there is one verse that the devil actually used. Alright? And it's found in Psalm 91. He said, don't you know that the angels will lift you up and keep your, what, keeping your foot from dashing against the stone? Let me read that to you, and I'm going to show you something about the Word and about how the devil made an attempt to get him off. Here we find out that in Matthew chapter 4, we see the story. And he said, if you're the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear, thy up, self, bear you up, lest you, get, lest you dash your foot against the stone. That's in Psalm 91, isn't it? Psalm 11 and tw uh, verses 11 and 12. Well, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Except he left the sword that would defeat him out of the message. What did he leave out of it? Well, let's read it. Let's read Psalm 91. You all probably know this. Here it is right here. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. Here's what the devil left out to keep you in all your ways. That was the sword that he left out of it to defeat him. See, we've got to remember something. That's why it's very important to know those scriptures. Because what's going to happen is, is... It may sound good, but does it have the sword to, de to defeat the devil in the middle of it? The Word is always going to bring revelation and deliverance, prosperity and goodness to you. It's going to open up doors. Oh, here, here's a revelation for you. My, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not my thoughts, says the Lord. For my thoughts are higher than yours. His word does not return void, but it does what? 
It, it accomplishes exactly what it's supposed to do, what it's been sent to do. Okay? That is the word that we see, memra. That is the voice of, that is the power behind the voice of God to make it produce what it's been sent to do. It's God's push, and it's his pull. That's the word that's on the inside of you that gives you that unction to function on the inside that you know that you've just got to do this. That's his voice, that's his memra, his, which is from the word amar, to say. That's him saying to you on the inside and moving you to do something. It's the same voice that is pulling people in because no man can come to, Jesus, come to God unless what the Holy Spirit draws him. So it's a draw and it's a push. First we get drawn and then we get pushed. <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, and that is because as an ambassador on the planet, okay, we've got to be pushed to an assignment. But he's drawing us into his word in order to open up the door for the assignment to function. Because without the what? Without the word, and let's put it this way, ain't going to happen. Look, just because I got three doctors doesn't mean my English is perfect. Okay? She makes me look good on paper. But anyway, <laughs> you, know, you know this has got to be God? Because here's a Texas boy in Florida teaching Hebrew. <laughs> That's got to be, I mean, what are, the odds? what are the odds? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So here, here, and this is why I said this, because of our next word that, we're, that we have, thank you, honey, is the word... Mazon. It's one of the words for food. What is, what is right in the middle of it? Zion. Oh, but this has got the colon, the dot on top of it. So it's a colon Zion. Mazon. Mazon. And it means food. In Hebrew. Now, we, we haven't talked about the mem yet. And we haven't talked about the final noon. Now, okay, in Hebrew you'll have some letters and then you'll have some final letters. Which is, final letters, the one standing is, is at the end of a word. And that can be a little confusing. And so, uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, so is the rest of it. <laughs> We've been there, done that. So, um, we'll walk through them, and, and, and look, I'm not expecting you to catch it. I'm not expecting you to get it. We're, we're not going to go through a test at the end of the class, see if you made an A. Okay? This is for your journey pleasure. This is for your empowerment. This is going to open up the door because, see, I'm not opening up the door to your mind right now. I am speaking spirit to spirit. My spirit talking to your spirit. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And since there's fire in the heart, and the Word of God is in your spirit, not in your brain, that's, look, you know, how, you know how I can tell if it, you know I can tell which one's in your spirit and which one's in your brain? Because if you know the address, it's in your brain. If you don't know the address, it's coming out of your spirit. Watch. How many old John? Okay. Tell me what verse this is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What is it? John 3 16. Guess where that came from? Out of your head. But if I said this, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Think thoughts of of good and not evil, to bring you to an expected end. Where's that? You know that one, but guess what? You memorize that. Okay? Now, these things I say unto you, that if you... These things I say unto you, that whatsoever you ask in my name, I shall do it, because I go to the Father. Now, where's that found? but you don't know the exact address. That's the point. But you knew the verse. 
That's because it's in your spirit. That's because Zion, to, to remember Zakar, is not a remembrance with your mind. It's a pull from your spirit. The, whole, the God, remember, the Holy Spirit, He will bring all three things to your remembrance that He taught you. He brings it up out of your spirit, not out of your brain. Let me ask you something. When, when, when you, okay, the people in heaven, the, the ones of us that have, the, our loved ones who have passed on before us, all the fathers of faith that have passed on for thousands and thousands of years, okay? You think they know the Word of God? Okay, well, let me ask you something. Do they have a brain? They don't have a physical brain, do they? It's in the dirt. Well, no, I'm serious. Their body's in the dirt. So they don't have a brain. So where is that stored? Exactly. That's what's here. It's stored in our spirit here. Exactly. It's a spiritual hard drive. That's exactly right. It's, it's, well, it's part of your BIOS chip, actually. <laughs> your basic operating system. It really is. That's why, because when you become born again, the life of God in you did not become second nature. It became first nature. Flesh should be your second nature. In the old world, you've heard, you've heard about when you say, well, that's just second nature to me. Well, what was your first nature? <laughs> you know? So, uh, see? So now, that's why Jesus says, walk in the Spirit. Apostle Paul says, walk not, in the, walk not in the flesh, but walk in the Spirit. So what does it mean by to walk? It doesn't mean to go... No. It means to conduct your manner of life like you're already in heaven, like you're already walking in the Spirit. When it says walk in the Spirit, it means conduct your manner of life. In other words, make it your lifestyle. That's your lifestyle. You know, everybody's got a little, little bit different style, a little bit different li lifestyle to live, you know? And, you know, everybody's got a different, different uh, job assignment that God has assigned them to do. I mean, you, you could be... The, you know, I, I'm, I know of the, the most anointed dental evangelist on the planet. <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying, yeah, but I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know, it, it's hard for them to say no when she's got stuff stuck in her mouth, you know, so she, you know, just, anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, I know, but, <laughs> but you got to have fun with it, you know. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so, so you get the idea that the, the food that God brings us is stored in our spirit. It's spiritual food. It's not physical food. Jesus says what? I have meat that you know not of. Mystery meat. And it ain't the stuff in the back of the fridge been there for four days. Huh, what is this? Wait, hey, 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 hey. Look, look. At my house, we got a rule. When in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> so, yeah. So here we have to understand something. Is this spiritual food and this word of God, God wants to sow it on the earth so it can bring increase. So look, look, he's coming here. Do you think that this planet looks like it is in heaven right now? No. First of all, there ain't enough love. So our job would be to turn this into a love planet. Right? So he starts by what? By planting love in us. So we can sow it out. Remember the vav? What's in heaven? Come down through the earth. Through here. Through here. We're going to find out about hands in a little bit. Yod. Yod, hey, vav, hey. Started with the yod, hand. It's the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so, and there's ten commandments. Wrote with the finger of God. We're going to get a little bit further into that. See how this all kind of plays out? But here we have to understand is that our job is to bring life and nourishment, the Word of God, to someone's spirit. So when, you're, when you are talking to someone, you're not talking to this. You're talking to their spirit. You know, um, how many of you all ever heard of the way of the Master? Okay, the way of the Master. One of the things he says is, look, what I do when I speak to someone is I don't, I bypass their intellect and talked right to their spirit. And I saw that 10, 15 years ago when he first started the Kirk Cameron, like what, 10, 15 years ago, something like that? I went like, that's the key right there. Don't try to reason it with their brain. You talk to their spirit. Because your spirit is looking for something. It's looking for what? Food. It's hungry. 
Yeah, they're hungry. No, no, no. Well, that's right. I mean, even there's, there's some things that you do, people won't understand it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you know, well, can, can I, can, yeah, yes, exactly. Can I tell you something? Jesus made a very good statement. He said, make sure the light that is within you is not darkness. Okay. The word light, or, in Hebrew, okay, we see, um, is uh, this word right here. Or, it's the word light. It was, an, it was originally intended for mankind to dwell in this light realm. Adam, glow, probably the Hebrew, Hebrew scribes say that he glowed and he couldn't see anything from here down because he was so glorious because what? He, he had the same life force that God had within him through the Ruach, the breath of God dwelling in him, and he radiated... That's why Satan couldn't come near him. He had to send a snake. <laughs> so, yeah, in the image of God. And he is light. It says God is light, right? God is light and God is love and there is no darkness in him. Now, watch this. Light in the Bible is also means physical light like the sun. Okay? It could also mean revelation or understanding. So what Jesus was saying is, is, don't let your understanding or your revelation be in the area of darkness. Let it be in the kingdom of God. Don't know, know more about Satan than you do God. Don't know more about, don't set your affections on things on the earth, but things in the heavenly realm. For love not the things on the earth, nor the things that are in the earth, for the love of God. Right? This is not the love of God. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, prayer of life, all those pass away. Right? So here's what we have to understand. That's why Jesus says, don't let your light be darkness. Right. And that's what happens. People are in that dark realm. Right? They have been blinded by the little g, God of this world, lest the light of the glorious gospel shine unto them and they be saved. Okay? So what happens is, is they are t getting food from the wrong source. Yes? Uh-huh. No, no, that's it. You're, yeah, right, right, right. Come and learn of me. Learn of my ways. Right. See, well, yeah, and and I will tell you this. And you stop and think about this for a minute. How long is your life on the earth? The Bible says 120 years. We get 120 years. Okay, huh? It's a vapor. Okay, now watch, watch, watch this. Where are you going to be in 300 years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we stud we studied that last week. Are you ready for this? This is the word right here. This is the word ya da. Yada. You've heard yada, 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 right? Yeah, friend. yeah, yada, okay? Yada is the word for knowledge. But it's knowledge that you have been through or what you have experienced by your yodes through your hands that you put your hands to do. The other one was da'at, started with a, with a, a dalit, door. And that is knowledge you've gotten through somebody teaching you or you've learned through the Bible. 
teaching. Yada is another knowledge. Don't you know that George Lucas was Jewish? Why do you think he named him Yoda? <laughs> knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, so, so, we, so we see this, but what happens is, is God takes this nourishment and uses it. Now, let's, let's take it this way. Nourishment is always for what? Growth. There is, there is nothing on this planet that does not eat food of some sort. I don't care what it is. It's got to have some sort of nourishment. I don't care if you're a plant, a flower, a bee, a giraffe, or us. Even skunks eat something. Okay? <laughs> it's like we have a little joke around the house. He says, what's for dinner? I said, skunk tail soup. You know? And right after that, we're going out for porcupine rides. yoo <laughs> You know? So, I was like, you go first. <laughs> it's like, okay? But see, but see, here's the thing. Spiritual food is for spiritual people. Now, watch this. Even, even the unsaved get spiritual food, even from God, and they don't even know it. Watch, 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 watch. Have you ever heard someone say, I knew that was going to happen? Or, something told me that. Or, I had a feeling that's God talking to them. Trying to warn them, trying to tell them, trying to give them directions. And they think it's them. They think it's their inside. You know, they don't realize that God, because he is love and loves them anyway, because he loves the whole world, he's, the whole world's just not in covenant with him. See? And so he's trying to lead and guide them and direct them, and they ain't listening. That's, be, that's because they live in that darkened realm where they can't hear the voice of God See the moving of the Spirit. So what do we have to do? We've got to give them spiritual food, nourishment for their spiritual growth. You know, we've, we've had some people over to our house. And uh, the lady grew up Catholic. And Elizabeth had to wait a year before she could open up the door to, in order for her to get born again. You know? Never talked to her about spiritual things until she opened up the door and asked her about how do you raise your children? Well, guess what she did? She, what, gave her some spiritual nurturing food about, well, you know, actually, if you're, I get it out of the Bible, out of Proverbs. Really? Yeah, it's in there. Well, about how to raise your children and stuff like that. Well, over a period of about six weeks, she kept sowing that mazon, that word of God into her spirit. Not her brain. Her spirit was crying out for help because her, her kid was not where he's supposed to be. So she was looking for answers. Her spirit was looking for answers. Why do you think when you go to the store, then you say hi to somebody, they start pouring out your whole, their whole life on top of you. Their spirit is looking for something your spirit's got. It's nourishment, and they don't know what it is. And so what happens is this mazon, this sword of the spirit, it goes in and it divides and separates the good from the bad. What's spiritual and what's flesh? What is the spirit? What is the soul? What's, because what's it trying to do? It's trying to create spiritual growth. That's what nourishment does. It feeds you. It feeds the plants. It feed, everything in the oceans eat. <laughs> All you have to do is go fishing. You'll find that out. <laughs> okay? At least I hope they do. <laughs> but this is why it's the, in the middle of food is the Zion, the sword. And look what's on top of it. Holy Ghost. As if the Holy Ghost through the foundational teachings of heaven is sowing it into the middle of man or the earth. Everybody knows this. Thou shalt not kill. Everybody knows that. They know what's wrong. They know what's wrong. Where did they get that information from? Some, a lot of, you know, there's some people that ignore it. Do it, you know? So here we have to understand is that, that they sow into you. I don't care if it's a, a grandma, a great grandma, or, or whatever. You know, when I was a kid, my grandma said, you know, if you ever get in trouble, you can always go to God. He'll help. I didn't know what that was. I mean, I was like 10 years old. Come on, you know? I'm like, huh? 
I mean, I, I was a good little Methodist boy. You know, I went for the coffee and donuts. Come on. You know? But here we have, here, here's what we got to get into us. Every part of our life, if we open our eyes and we, we listen intently to what God is trying to say, every area of our life has been sown spiritual food throughout our entire life to lead you to this moment of revelation. Even all the way back when you were a kid, when your grandma said, come on, we're going to church. Right? And you're four or five years old. You want... What she's trying to do is trying to bring you into church, right? That didn't happen to me. We... No, we weren't raised in a little godly, godly home. You know, my, my whole thing was, is yeah, we'll go to church, but we've got to be back by 12 because the Cowboys playing today. We were from Texas, you know. So, you know, Texas was football, or football was Texas, whatever. But we didn't know any different. We only know what we were taught, and that's the way we grew up. I grew up on a hunting ranch. You know, we get up watching football and hunting deer and, and, and you know, going fishing and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I grew up like that. But, but every once in a while, you know, it's like, for instance, one time we was out in our, in our ranch out in West Texas. We had a 1,200-acre ranch out 15 miles from nowhere years ago. And when it was a new moon, it was darker than dark. I mean, you couldn't see the hand before your face. But then when, when all the clouds were gone, then you, the stars lit up the place. And it was just, you could see the Milky Way out there. And you're going out there and you're looking at that and you're going like, Somebody created that. <laughs> but here, and here's what's interesting. Every time God feeds you with something, he's feeding himself to you. Because he has the word. He's feeding himself to you because he's trying to bring you to a different area of knowledge of revelation for your next step. That's why he was teaching you when you were five years old this. And then when you're seven, this. And then when you're ten, this. And then this. And who was he using? He was using people around us, wasn't he? He was, he was using all the stars at night. You know, I, I, I went out one time, I was like, I don't know, 12 or 15. I said, God, if you're real, give me, show me in the sky or something like that. All of a sudden I saw phew, phew, two meteorites. I went, that's good enough for me. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it couldn't have been time better, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, couldn't have been, I mean, who knows? And here's what gets me. Those meteorites have been traveling for thousands of years to get to me at that point in time, in history, to where, and he moved me to go outside and look up just in time to say this, and those two meteorites go boop, boop. Amazing. Yeah. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know what told me to say this, but she was looking at her eyes were open. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because she was moment. Yeah. 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 There it went. There it went. Bam. Yep. Right and she looks at you like a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> Fireworks, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's wrap this up real quick. Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up, okay? Everything God has been sowing into your life at this time has been coming through the Zion, through the Word of God, and, and a lot of times we don't even know that it was the Word of God. It was being sown in you since you were a child. And it is bringing you to the point of the revelation of your destiny and your calling. That's why this book says that it's a, uh, it is a destiny discovery tool and it is a calling accelerator. Because once you realize what God wants you to do, the next step 
is put the pedal to the metal. And along the way, every stone, every place you put your foot, every time that you take a step, more food shows up for the journey. Why? Because you are a vav on the earth, sowing the Zion, the Word of God. So here's our spiritual principle number seven. You are the walking Word of God in the earth realm. You are the one who brings His written Word to places in order to change the atmosphere. You are an atmosphere changer. You are the atmosphere changer for the kingdom of God. By using the Word of God, you can change that atmosphere of the places that you visit to make it conducive for miracles and for transformation. No wonder God keeps sowing Word into your life. Why do you think He keeps nourishing you? As evolved, you act as God's agent of change in people's lives. But now as a Zion, we are the ones that bring the life of heaven to earth to change the atmosphere of the earth to reflect the atmosphere of heaven. Yes. Each one of those on it, yeah. Yeah, there's 22 of them, so I have to, I have to split them up. But yeah, I think I will. Or, or maybe daily devotional cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Daily devotional. Yeah, we'll do that. Now, now that ends our study for tonight. Put up the next slide if you will. Yeah, thank you. Um, that ends our next one. But here's the thing. Next week, we're going to study this letter. Chet. It looks like Chet, but it's pronounced Chet. Chet. It's the first word, first letter of the two words that are really important in Hebrew. One is Chen. Looks like Chen. Okay, but it's pronounced Chen, not, not like a chicken buck buck, but Chen. And then Chesed. Well, that's Ha. That, that, that's a He. Yeah, that, that means the. H-A. So that, now that now that brings up something because you got to remember the remember the hay y'all remember the hay it kind of looks like a hay doesn't it but what there's a what hole in the hay and so the hay with this would be a, would be a, a, a kamutz beneath it that would be the word ha which would mean the word the in Hebrew. The chet. Now let me explain something. Let me let me explain let me explain something about the chet, and we're going to get into this next week. The chet is the first letter in the word chen, and the word chesed, chesed or chesed. Okay, chen is the first word of the word grace in Hebrew. Chen means grace. Now look, grace is not like the grace that we think of here you know, unmerited favor, okay, or empowerment. To a Jew, if I was to say chen to him, he would jump backflips. Because it really means God treating you like you never sinned. Okay? And then the word chesed is the word for loving kindness. Now, now watch, 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 watch. Let me show you where this comes in real strong and real heavy in Hebrew culture. On the, on the fourth day, after you have taken the lamb into the house, you would have to take the lamb, and you were to kill the lamb, and you were to take the blood of the lamb, and you were put it over the doorpost of your house and down the lentils of the side of your house, so that when the angel of death, it shall pass over you. They made a chet on their house. Yes. Now, what's really interesting, and I'll show you this after class, after we end, is that I, we had a chet of light show up in our living room. Exactly like that, with no windows around or anything. I'll show it to you. It only happened once. I've never seen it again. I, I got a picture of it. Yes, I got a picture of it. Okay? Yeah. Yes, it is. Exactly. Look, we have stuff like that happen in our life. Look, look. You should have stuff like this happen all the time in your life. Indicators, indicators. We have feathers on the floor. White feathers that long on the floor. 
Yes. No. We, 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 go, we go and preach healing and miracle conferences. We had a big one over in the, over in the, over in the Plaza Resort, and, and money came down, was flying down. There was, di- there was gems on the floor. There was gold dust all over the place. This should be physical manifestations of God's loving kindness on the earth. Yeah, we, yeah, people picking them up. We got them. I got pictures of them. Uh, Rama, our daughter, was, was, ta- was speaking on the microphone, and she had a glow around her, like an aura. Yeah, I got, I got to show you the, I'll show you the pictures after class. We got to go. But, but, yeah, yeah. But, but here's what we have to understand. Next week, we're going to talk about the chet. And we're also going to talk about... This letter, the tet. The tet represents the word of God that you have sown into your life. You find it, you bring it back out, and you spread it around. <laughs> well, kind of, sort of. But anyway, uh, one of, uh, we're... we're, we're where did faith go? I got to go to turn everything off. Oh, so anyway, next week we're going to talk about these two letters, the Chet and the Tet. Yep. And so, with the spiritual principles that are involved in these, you're going to find out something. Every one of them, you are to take and add to your life, and then go to the next one and bring the other one with you. And then you take the ne- the one that you've learned. You become that letter, and then you go grab the next one, but you bring the, the rest of them with you. So every time on your journey, you become each letter one at a time, but you remember that letter and how it functions and what it does in your life, and you bring it to the next level with you. When God came to dwell inside of you, he brought everything with him. He did not leave anything out. It's hidden in your spirit, not from you, but for you. Until you search Him and seek Him with all of your heart. Now that word heart, that word heart in Hebrew is the word lev. 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 It kind of does, but look, it's like this. Here it is. Here it is. There it is. Lev. It's like whoever is sitting on the throne of your heart rules your house. Avaha. Avaha Ava, Ava, Ava is the word for love in Hebrew. Avaha. It's got an aleph and a vav and an and a aleph. Okay? It means that God surrounds man with his love. In the Hebrew, I mean, it's it's just very powerful. Okay, this is this is why this is why I get really excited when I get to tell stories with letters. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I know, and that's the point. That's the point. Okay, yeah, we need to. Yeah, let's. Yeah, we got to wrap it up. So, let's uh, let's let's sign off for now. So, thank everybody for. Can you turn us off? Thank everybody for joining us. Um, go back and watch it about five thousand times. You'll catch more. But we will, we'll see you next week, um, live Thursday at 6.30. So God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And, yeah, it doesn't matter.